welcome friends to this uh, second half of the second day's uh, event, the session or the three day meditation workshop we'll be having here in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. Once again, I want to welcome you. Very happy to see you again. I have been mentioning to you about uh, the difference between meditation which is mechanical and meditation which is with love and devotion. It is a qualitative difference. In meditation, the quantity does not matter as much as the quality. If you sit in meditation mechanically for hours and hours, it's just a routine thing that you are doing every day, nothing will happen. Nothing has happened. But if you do it with love and devotion, which is an essential ingredient of high quality meditation, things happen. They begin to happen all around you. Therefore, love and devotion should be considered an integral part of all meditation. Love and devotion will leave meditation behind and take you beyond the mind. Meditation will not take you beyond the mind. But you can start with love and devotion from day one, from the moment you start. Love and devotion means that you have a beloved in your vision, in your imagination, in who you can see inside during meditation. If you have no beloved or never seen one, you can't say you are doing any meditation with love and devotion. Love and devotion for a concept is not the same thing. Love and devotion for a God that you have never seen is no good. It's not a meditation. It's some kind of a prayer. You can do prayer like that. You can pray. But meditation, quality meditation to have inner experiences does not come about by meditating with no beloved that you ever seen. So the beloved is a must. And to have a beloved, it should be a living person. Not somebody who lived once upon a time or one who lived so far away you never seen or one that you will never see, or one whose image you have no idea about, the one whose face you have never known or seen, whose darshan you have never had. That doesn't work. One of the very important reasons, I think, to have a perfect living master is to have a beloved for meditation. Because otherwise we are making our meditation hollow. So that is why, when we meditate at the third eye center and invite our beloved to join us, and join us in meditation. And join us in conversation. And join us for having a chat. When we have this kind of informal relationship with the beloved in meditation, it works. Less than that is not high quality meditation. So that is why when I say let us meditate in high quality, I would mean that. I hope you all have somebody who can be your beloved that you can put your attention on and see the image. Image not by making it up. Image by recall. Live image. That's another picture we make that we just make up our own picture. Or we take up a photograph. A photograph is not a substitute for a person. A photograph is not alive. It should be a beloved who is alive who you have seen, who you can remember, whose movements you can remember, whose words you can remember, whose face you can remember. When you put that in your meditation, it becomes high quality meditation. There are a couple of new steps we are going to do today. One is to introduce the chanting of Simran or the repetition of words of Simran or Mantra during meditation. I indicated earlier that the value of that is very limited. The value of using words to repeat is basically so that by making the mind repeat them, we do not allow the mind to think of other things. It's just a way of concentrating our attention within the eye center and not let the mind run away. 
because the tendency of the mind to run away is the strongest during meditation. You all can, you can all testify to that. Therefore, the repetition by the mind of the words of mantra given by a guru, given by a master, is a very good device. It works. But it should be repetition by the mind, not by the tongue. Supposing you only repeat the words by the tongue, the mind is running all over the world. That is not considered meditation. In one of his Hindi couplets, Kabir, the perfect living master of his time, says, Mala to karme phire, jeeb phire mukh mahi, manwa to chahun desh phire, ye to simran nahi. He says, if the rosary and the beads are moving in your hand, and the words are moving in your tongue, and the mind is wandering all over the world, don't think it is similar at all. It's not, a, it's not a useful thing. It should be done with the mind. Real Simran is what's done with the mind. That means the very mind that thinks, the very mind that thinks of other things, should be converted to think of what you wanted to think. It is like giving a direction to your mind. You have to assert the superiority of the soul over the mind. You have to use your spiritual will to override the mental will. The spiritual will is coming from inside. We have used the mind itself to develop spiritual will. But we use the mind positively to overcome the mind that wants to distract you. So this is a... Sometimes you have to use a conversation for that. The mind runs. No. Repeat these words. My firm instruction. Repeat these words and put it on job. If you, if you don't take control of what the mind is doing, mind will run all over. Sometimes you won't even know what it is doing. Sometimes people are doing the repetition of words, they are similar, and the mind runs something else, they start thinking about those things, they forget they are doing similar at all. And they after a few minutes, sometimes after half an hour, they think, oh, I was supposed to be doing similar. The mind can distract you to that extent. Therefore, we should use. But there is a certain way of making this task easier. And that is because the mind also has a habit to whatever it learns, it can make it a habit and keep it doing it by itself. You can habituate the mind to repeat the words. Which means, don't use the words during meditation. Think of them, repeat them all the time, whenever you can. You will find that you can do it most of the time. Most of the time we are not doing that kind of intellectual work that our mind's concentration requires. Reading a book or attending to a conversation or doing something. Most of the time we are driving, we are walking, we are just cooking, we are doing other things, we are doing different chores during which the mind can be kept busy repeating the words. This needs some practice, but supposing you do this practice for a while, a few months, you will notice that the mind, every time you say, what is the mind thinking, it will be thinking of those words. If you go to sleep and wake up in the middle of the night, what were you thinking? The, the repetition of the words, the Simran. Simran can become automatic by habituating the mind to keep on repeating it. That is why it's good to use this, these words for practice and then make it a habit and the mind forms habits and the mind will keep on repeating it. So every time you sit in meditation, the Simran is already going on and the distraction of the mind becomes so much less. That's a good, good tip the, the masters gave us, that you can use the Simran by making it a habit. Now, once you do that, that's the purpose of just keeping your attention within the eye center and not letting it go out, not thinking of other things. If it does bother you, then you can bring it back every time. That is a very tedious exercise that the mind draws you out and you bring it back. It draws you out, you bring it back. Most of us, at least in the beginning, meditate like that. So mind is running out and we pull it back. 
What happens? We think we have won every battle with the mind because every time we brought it back, but we lost the war because the mind succeeded in keeping us engaged in the battle, engaged in going out and in, out and in. So it's not easy. I am not saying that you can do it overnight or in one day or in one session, but by practice it becomes easier. There is therefore another way that is called the advanced course of using Simran and meditation. And that is not to fight the mind at all. Use, divide your will that the mind thinks of something, you say, you do your work, I'll do mine. And I'll continue with meditation, you can think what you like. With little practice, you can do that also. With little practice, you can learn how to ignore the mind. And that's very useful. Because there is no battle involved in that. And there is no battle and therefore, unlike the meditation with a battle with the mind, which leaves you tired, this kind of meditation leaves you refreshed. You feel happy and good. Meditation should not end up saying, this was so tiring. It should end up by saying, how refreshed and happy I am. And that happens when you do this meditation correctly. If you add to good quality repetition, simran, mantra, the presence of the master, your beloved, and have conversations with the beloved, express your love for the beloved, express your devotion for the beloved, when that happens, it becomes a very refreshing meditation. You really enjoy it. Then you like to do it. Otherwise, you force yourself to do it. But when you like to do something, you run for it. When you don't like something, then you force upon yourself. It doesn't work the same way. You always succeed better in doing things which you like. So that's why make your meditation in a way that you like. Now, how many of you have a Simran or a Mantra or words given by a master which you can repeat? It is yes. Very good. How many don't have any words of this kind? For those who do not have any words, you coin a few words now. Coin a short phrase of a few words expressing your love for your beloved and think of any beloved, anybody that you love and put that picture in your mind. Living person. A living person whom you love, put that in your picture, express your love in a few words and go on repeating them. That's your temporary mantra, temporary symbol for today. Let's begin. Let's close our eyes. Position ourselves in a comfortable position. Now we talk of the asana.